This episode of Military Matters is brought to you by Stars and Stripes. Stars and Stripes provides independent news and information to the U.S. military community, including active duty service members, DOD civilians, veterans, contractors, and their families. Unique among Department of Defense authorized news outlets, Stars and Stripes is governed by the principles of the First Amendment. No slants, no agendas, just the news. Go to stripes.com and see the difference for yourself. That's stripes.com. Use promo code podcast. Get 50% off your digital subscription. Use promo code podcast. Get 50% off your digital subscription. Go to stripes.com now. This episode is also brought to you by International Auto Logistics. Go to PCSMyPOV.com to get all of the information you'll need on storing and picking up your vehicle. Or check out the just-launched IAL mobile app. Just search for PCS My POV in the Apple Store or on Google Play. COVID-19 has been sweeping across the country, forcing the world indoors for a month now with no clear end in sight. For millions of veterans and service members, the isolation and uncertainty have made conditions like PTSD, depression, and other mental health issues even harder to deal with. To combat the dire consequences of shutting in veterans with serious mental health issues in their homes with no access to a counselor, many clinics and agencies have turned to telehealth or a virtual counseling experience over video calls and even just over the phone. In this episode, we talk to two mental health clinicians that are both veterans about how COVID-19 has impacted the mental health of veterans across the country. Is telehealth working? And what about those people living in unsafe environments? What can we do for our own mental health while we shelter in place? This is Military Matters. In a previous life, I was a mental health counselor before I jumped into audio and podcasting. I worked with victims of crime and folks who were coping with trauma, mostly children. I've also dealt with my own mental health issues related to my time in service. So so I understand what it's like to be on both sides of this counseling table. But many of you may not know what counseling is, what, what it looks like. Does it involve medicine? Is it like hypnosis? What is counseling? We don't prescribe medication. We might work with some psychiatrist if we feel that the client or the patient needs or can benefit. For medication, but really it's about using talk therapy, allowing people to tell their story, allowing people to sort of work through their internal blocks in order to get to a place where they feel they can overcome their challenges and you know really create a life for themselves that they feel some happiness around. That's Dr. Carlos Garcia. He's a licensed clinical psychologist and a Marine veteran. I was in the Marine Corps for eight years as a uh, infantryman. And coming out of the, the military, I actually transitioned into a career as a, as a fireman and paramedic. After doing that for about eight years, you know, I was sort of looking at the impact that that sort of work, both in the military and EMS workers, first responders, how it was impacting us in terms of mental health. We asked Dr. Garcia to describe how self-isolation is affecting veterans' mental health. So one of the things that I'm seeing that... Uh, you know, can be a cause for concern with COVID-19, uh, not just in the military population, but but also in just our, our population in general, is the amount of anxiety that is being created for folks. Now, the way I understand it as a clinical psychologist, if we look at worry on a spectrum, on one end of that spectrum, we might have just general worry, right? All of us have some level of, you know, distress in our lives. We are busy. We have jobs to attend to. We have family to attend to. And sometimes that can become very stressful. On the other end of that spectrum is when worry becomes anxiety and anxiety becomes so bad that people have panic episodes, panic attacks, right? And so there's every range in between. Now, worry is actually not a bad thing. From an evolutionary perspective, what worry is, it's our brain's capacity to look at future problems and identify a solution, which is great. However, when we start to ruminate, when we start to worry excessively, that's when we start to feel high levels of anxiety. And that anxiety left uncontrolled will lead to panic. 
everywhere we turn right now, it feels like someone's telling us about something that is frightening or disturbing. Numbers of sick people, stories of people dying from COVID-19, and that's on top of the now normalized political upheaval, global terrorism, and the bad stuff happening just in your neighborhood. But don't forget about your own personal problems. Family, kids, bills. For many of us, our lives were turned upside down and we're all struggling to find out when or if our lives will return to a normal that we recognize. That right there just stressed me out. I feel like things that are happening in culture, this COVID-19, it's creating a sense of internal distress for me because the biggest thing for people is that we feel out of control. When we feel out of control, when we feel like there's no structure in our lives, we start to panic. We don't like that. And so I start to panic as an individual. And what happens? Well, I could be on social media expressing that panic to others. Now this is sort of getting widespread. But think about what's been happening, with, for instance, with toilet paper, right? At no point does any media come out and say this is a good thing to do. But in the matter of weeks, all toilet paper is gone from every aisle in every store. That's how panic spreads, right? It starts with one person, and then the, the culture, the, the society around us starts to see that and say, wait, then I need to respond too. And I think that's how we shift into this place where we all feel out of control, and we all feel this internal distress. Anxiety and fear can lead to panic. But veterans aren't exactly known for their propensity to panic. It's like a deployment. That's Dennis Higgins, who is a mental health counselor and an Army veteran. My name is Dennis Higgins. I'm an outpatient therapist working with Medicaid clients in northeastern Pennsylvania. My experience in mental health and social services is primarily in the veteran space as an outpatient therapist at the VA New York Harbor Healthcare System and a case manager with Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. I've seen a lot of memes circulating from veterans stating that self-isolation isn't affecting them as much because of their experiences being deployed. Is it possible that those deployments are helping veterans adjust to being stuck in the house? In some ways, this is a deployment. You're stuck in the same place with the same people for a long period of time with all its good and bad. And, you know, you will have a threat outside that you can't see or really understand and it's really just luck if you get exposed to it or not and that was a good description of a lot of my deployments and so it does feel like groundhog day it sounds like veterans have some coping skills for the covid 19 pandemic that they may not have even realized that's why counseling is so important Counselors and therapists help their clients realize their strengths and help them with tools to manage the parts they need help with. Self-isolation means that therapists and clients alike are stuck at home. This has pushed some agencies and government to turn to telehealth services. Instead of going to their clinician's office for an in-person counseling session, they can now switch on their webcam and talk to their counselor from their home. I think we're seeing that it's working. I think we're seeing that it's got positive benefits on a large scale. Uh, organizations that keep pretty detailed statistics are going to be able to use those statistics to either justify or, or fight it. Uh, the VA has moved completely to telehealth. The Medicaid is moving to telehealth. You know, these are large organizations that have large amounts of data at their disposal. So I think it's going to become more prevalent Telehealth sounds very convenient and may open the door to getting help to people who were reluctant to physically go and meet with the counselor. But there's been concern about the privacy associated with telehealth. How do you get counseling if you're living with an abuser or in an environment you can't openly talk in? That it, it's a tough thing to give advice to because that situation is so rotten. So if you're stuck with the source, unfortunately, the best thing I can say is that it's practice learning how to tolerate some of those emotions until you can be in a position to escape or work on them. There is no easy answer to that one. And that is, it's something that we're very aware of. We're keeping an eye on for all of our clients. And it's, you know, we wish we could change it. It's one more thing that 
makes this situation a disaster. So we know that isolation can cause some serious anxiety. We all have tons of legitimate worries here. That's really important to stress here is that your anxiety and my anxiety, it's valid. It's real. What are some ways we can manage our time while we're stuck at home to ease the anxiety and help us to even grow during this crisis? Now, the following strategies that I'm going to suggest are probably not what I would suggest on a day-to-day, -day, but given the circumstances right now, they are probably one of the best ways to cope, and that is distracting. Distracting yourself, right? I'll have a client that's coming in with severe depression and saying, you know what? I'm spending all day watching Netflix or on my phone or sort of jumping onto the computer. Now, long-term, I don't want that to be their coping mechanism because it's an unhealthy one. But if in the meantime, that helps you get through the day, then do that. Watch movies all day. Distract yourself. But also don't judge yourself about the fact that you're doing it, right? That's why it's easy for a lot of folks. That's why working, even though maybe they don't like going to work, is a good distraction throughout the day right? Or going to the gym or doing things, just sort of staying busy. So I would say in, in, if you can find any ways at home to create some structure, to create some distraction for now, that's not a bad idea. Dennis Higgins. Having a schedule is really good and, and you know, set up stuff. We tried to set up this, the home office to be as much like my office back down in Easton, you know, so it's the computer, here are my books. You know, I brought my books out of my office, so I still have them to refer to. I still have the same notebook that I used at work. It's, it's trying to replicate that and keep that sameness so it, it feels comfortable. And it, it gives you something to base, to structure your life around, because we certainly can't count on anything outside of our immediate vicinity right now, because we just don't know. So we go around all day, you know, we're tending to family, we're tending to coworkers, we come home, you know, we're eating dinner, we're watching TV, but most people feel their highest level of distress and anxiety at night as they're trying to go to bed, right? That's when you can't escape your thoughts. That's when your mind starts kind of really going and, it, you know, why a lot of people really deal with, with some challenges around sleep. One of the things for me is that I've realized I need to maintain some level of structure in my life while I'm sort of locked up at home. So don't feel bad that you shot through 11 seasons of a Netflix show. That's okay right now. If that's helping you keep your mind off the things you can't control right now, then do that. Keeping a schedule and giving yourself some routine can be really helpful right now. If you have kids at home, a schedule can help reduce some of that stress that comes with the chaos and even open up new ideas for keeping them and you occupied. This is definitely a brave new world we're living in, and expert knowledge is anecdotal at best. We just haven't collected the data to make definitive statements about how it's affecting mental health yet. It's moving really fast, and I don't think we're going to have a clear picture till it's over. So one of the final things that I always like to leave people with is to understand that mental health is a thing and that we all struggle. Don't be afraid, you know, have that courage to reach out to somebody, reach out to a counselor or a therapist, you know, really get help with whatever sort of struggles and things that you're challenging, you know, that you feel challenged with. I am with Veterans Counseling Veterans. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Vets Counseling Vets. And I don't want you to forget, suicide is a real thing. It's a real problem for us. So if you feel like you're struggling you feel like you're suicidal, or you know someone close to you that is, every town you live in has a local suicide cross crisis line. Every town that you live in has a local crisis line. Reach out to them. If you feel like you can reach out to a therapist or even a friend, anything that you can do to get some support, to get some help. There's the crisis text line. That's a decent resource. It's 741-741. Uh, that is... You know, a way that you don't actually have to talk to be heard. You can just text back and forth. Uh, you know, there are the regular suicide prevention uh, lifeline 
the 1-800-273-8255. And if you're a veteran, you press one and they connect you to a veteran specific branch of that. I might be getting ahead of myself here, but what happens when this is all over? When we can open our doors again, go outside, go to restaurants, how does the pandemic coming to an end affect us? And I think that will have a definite impact if we open up too soon and then cause more problems. You know, just, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, you know, it's, it's the sequel and that's, that's not going to be pleasant. And, and the long term, yeah, the sequels are always worse. And the, so the, you know, and then the long-term effect of this, like I said, when I started, you know, first started talking, this is a brave new world. We don't know what it's going to look like after this. And it's going to change. This is a trauma. This is a traumatic event. This is going to have long-term lasting effects on our mental health. And it will be important to process it and and grieve and not just for the individuals that passed away that may or may not be in our lives some people don't have any direct connections to this and it's you know but we need to be able to grieve we need to be able to grieve collectively and we need to be able to be seen and to be seen grieving there is a light at the end of this tunnel. It may not seem like it at the moment, but it is there. We talked a lot about veterans, but don't think for a moment that we've forgotten about our service members still serving, still in uniform, struggling to operate in a military they might not even recognize right now. These are challenging times. Like Dennis Higgins said, it's a brave new world. That's right. Texting your NCOs, letting them know you're alive and well, and probably rocking the longest hair you've had since you've signed up. This is tough. Families are trying to adjust to a new normal and chances are the minute you have it figured out, it'll be over and we'll be right back to a whole new normal. But if there's one thing we walked away from our interviews with our mental health experts, it was this. Your anxiety is real and it's okay to be frustrated, angry, confused, and even scared. It's all right not to have all the answers right now. There's no shame in feeling what you're feeling right now. It's tough being a mom or a dad, a husband or wife, parent, teacher, friend, and whatever other hat you're being forced to wear. And to do it all with a smile? That's impossible. So if you have someone to talk to, to share your experience with, talk to them. Reach out and build a new virtual network of friends or reconnect with family. Do what you think is appropriate for your situation. And above all, reach out for help if you need it. We'll have links and numbers in the show notes. From your wingman and your battle buddy, we're all in this together. While you're at home, you've got the news on the TV, you've got social media articles, but how do you sort through the noise? Where can you go for news without the spin? Go to stripes.com and get your news from a source you know and a source you can trust. Stars and Stripes has been the news source of choice for service members, veterans, and their families since Lincoln crossed the Pacific to fight the Nazis. I don't think that's accurate. What is accurate is using promo code PODCAST will save you 50% off your digital subscription. 50% off just by using promo code PODCAST at checkout. That, that's almost half off. No, Rod, that is half off. I'm not a mathologist, and you don't need to be one either to know 50% off, unbiased, no-spin news is worth every penny. Go to stripes.com and save today. Folks, you can check us out on Twitter at StripesMMPod, or you can check me out on Twitter as well at RodPodRod. Rod. And you can reach me at DPodFerris. I'm Rod Rodriguez. And I'm Desmond Ferris. And we'll see you at the next episode.